the game didn't matter, then we would maybe play for fun. We weren't sure whether or not we were going to do it. And then since the game matter, I think it's unfair to other teams if we don't try very hard because for all the other teams, they look at us and they're like, okay, that's a free loss, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, if we don't try hard 100% versus TL, then I don't mm-hmm. think it's fair to the other teams. I think that's questionable integrity. So we we decided to give it all just, you know, for the fairness of it and also the grudge match and, and you know, the all the impact behind this match for, for Team Liquid. Uh, hey guys, this is Ashley King of Horizon Esports, and I'm joined by none other than Cloud9 Vulcan. After Cloud9 eliminates Team Liquid from the playoffs after that spectacular game, how are you feeling? Um, honestly, I'm feeling great. Um, you know, being able to knock out TL because I think Jack said that in the last few years they knocked Cloud9 three out of four times. I think they send them home like in the playoffs. Um, last year when I was on Clutch, they beat us in Game Five. So. It, it feels good to you know be able to end their or their season. Okay, that's like a, some organization level revenge. But I have to talk about the game that just happened, and I have to talk about the ending. The expect get backdoor using Tom Kench into Team Liquid's game, um, Team Liquid space. Can you run me through how that backdoor went and what the team communication was like during that time? Um, we wanted to siege the last and entire top. Uh, we thought we had a lot of pressure with them anyways, and we can we can do a lot of pressure. But then we weren't able to use our ults correctly. I think we, we threw our ults out. We didn't get much from it. So we decided to peel back to the dragon. And I, I had been talking like a few minutes before that, that I can I can ult anytime in their base. I, had, I was level 16 at the time and ranked three time control as a very long range. So I asked Ven Alphas, can you push turrets? And he's like, yeah, it's pretty fast. <laughs> and then uh, they, they started to walk up mid. And I was like, OK, guys, create chaos. The game's over. And we, we it in and that was it that was it um did you guys yeah. celebrate much after the game because i know that this game didn't matter much for cloud nine Stu, but so you ended the split in a victory that must feel pretty nice oh yeah it did um i think we popped off harder than after any other win even though this one technically didn't matter for for us in terms of standings it matters for us as a as a grudge match and being able to knock tl out for sure and I do want to ask a few more relate, uh, game-related question. What were your initial impression on how the match is going to unfold after you saw the draft? Because Team Liquid made some interesting choices, especially picking Ash over Aphelios, which I believe was left open at that time. Yeah. Um, I thought I thought the game would be pretty simple at first. I thought we could snowball pretty easily with Vars, Tom, Rumble a lot. Uh, we can you know fight around objectives a lot, uh, snowball that way. But um, we made some mistakes, and then in some team fights, the game got kind of hard. I think we were trying to fight without having everything up. I think like Vrasil was down, we tried to fight. Rumble was down, we tried to fight. Um, I kept getting caught out because we couldn't really go forward that much. And I, I kept walking forward and getting yeah. CC chain. I think TL played pretty well around one-shotting me without me being able to find my gray out. So props to them for that. But mm-hmm. uh, the game was looking pretty grim at a certain point, but we were able to catch out double a few fights in a row. Um, we started getting some hopes and, and we kind of realized that we don't really get out TL. It's just that it's harder for us to play the fights, I think. Mm-hmm. We have to look for, for good angles and we were able to find them. So definitely thought the game was going to be hard at some point, but I think from the draft, it wasn't favored in anyone. Like, it wasn't really tilted in anyone's favor. I think we both had, like, our moments to win the game. Mm, yeah, like, many people sh- thought that Cloud9 was a favorite um, be- both before and after the draft. And it's a quite an interesting turnaround because Cloud9 versus Team Liquid was supposed to be the last match of the split where, you know, Team Liquid at that p- time anointed as the promised prince of LCS going against um, Cloud9. But when we actually came to this match... It wasn't the case then cloud uh cloud nine was already confirmed at the first place and team Luke was just fighting desperately for that space in the playoffs how did you did you think about this change in matchup and how the situation has changed for both teams uh yeah i mean i, I think it's funny because we played them in the first game of the season and in the last and the first game we were the underdogs you know we were the brand new team people thought they weren't really sure what to expect of us and we went into it we didn't really know what to expect ourselves like if we would be able to do as we do in scrims on stage uh we were able to pull off a pretty fast one in the first game and then the roles were pretty much re- uh, reversed uh for today yeah. um the game was much harder which is kind of funny considering that our record should show that the game is pretty easy on our side but um yeah it, it was 
funny how the, the rules changed. And that victory against Team Liquid was the beginning of that winning streak that Cloud9 had for a while. And some people talk about, you know, rosters and the time it takes for a roster to come together. And some people might even say, hey, it's only by the time the spring sp uh, summer split hits that a roster can truly find its teamwork. But it almost felt like t Cloud9, the moment they stepped onto the LCS stage, they already had very, very good teamwork and synergy going on. What do you think is the secret behind this? I think we spent a lot more time boot camping. First of all, we, we spent more time preparing. Um, you know, me and Sven went on a boot camp for a month in Korea before the, the team was together, just because we are a new duo coming into a new team. So we thought that'd be a great idea to to get it, you know, build the foundation really fast. So we did that. And then we also had a boot camp like a month later as a team, or not even a month later, like a, a few weeks after uh, the whole team together. And I think we're all really easy to work with in terms of improving. We're all very willing to talk to each other, honestly, and be kind of direct with what we think we should improve on. So. Uh, we had a, like a, a really good system around you know getting better and we have a great coaching staff behind all of this so mm -hmm. i think it's a lot of different things but especially you know going out and doing the boot camp uh helped us being really prepared for first district split yeah really great to see all those efforts paid off and i gotta ask this question because i didn't get to tune in in time did you win the mvp for the last game uh i'm not sure i haven't seen that info. yeah because you had an insane factor with the time change because the whole meme yeah. has been that you didn't get to win the MVP for the entire split. Mm -hmm. And I think it might have been like a very satisfying narrative if you won the MVP for the last game. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it would be cool for the narrative, but I yeah. played pretty poorly in that game. If, if you um, if you ignore that backdoor, I guess the backdoor was the game winning play, but mm. I don't think I deserve it because of how hard I was running it. So. It's all about that highlight reel. It's all about someone who gets the pentakill, yeah. <laughs> who always does like the <laughs> 3v1, because I almost thought that Cloud9 was going to pick something slightly more interesting now, given that the result of the today's match didn't matter too much for Cloud9 standing in the playoffs. Because if you look at the LEC, G2 also played their final game without it counting into the standings, and they played some crazy stuff like bar tops. So, what, what led Cloud9 to draft relatively standard draft for today's game? Um... We thought about trolling, but we said if the game didn't matter, then we would maybe play for fun. We weren't sure whether or not we were going to do it. And then mm -hmm. since the game mattered, I think it's unfair to other teams if we don't try very hard because for all the other teams, they look at us and they're like, okay, that's a free loss, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, if we don't try hard 100% versus TL, then I don't mm -hmm. think it's fair to the other teams. I think that's questionable integrity. So we, we decided to give it all just, you know, for the fairness of it and also the grudge match and, and you know, the all the impact behind this match for, for Team Liquid. Oh, wow. Okay, that's actually really respectful. And thank you for telling me all that. Um, now that we're heading into playoffs, we don't know exactly which teams are confirmed for the playoffs. But have to ask this question. What are the teams that you might be possibly worry of or could challenge you given that Cloud9 has shown such dominance throughout the entire split? Um, I think it's TSM. Uh, even though they've had a pretty poor weekend, uh, this weekend, I think they have the highest highs, mm -hmm. and with some more time, maybe they can polish their play and be able to reach those highs more often. Um, so I'm looking at them. There's also EG, but yesterday we were able to kind of target them in draft. I think we got a solid advantage from batting out Jizuke. Mm -hmm. So I think if we meet them in playoffs, we can repeat that and have a pretty easy game on our hands. But I'm still looking at those two teams as the, the solid like top three with us. Another revenge match for you? Yeah, hopefully we're still saying we can we can take him out after the broker record. Mm. And I do want to talk about the international matches at the moment because I know that this is a tough situation around the world and a lot of the future of international matches look uncertain. But given that Cloud9 has been performing so well in LCS, um, the LCK as a region, and even in LEC, I hear conversation about you know Cloud9 people wondering what this team would look like in an international stage going against other top teams from the respective regions. So are there any particular teams that you would like personally like to face in an international stage? Because you've been to Wales last year too. Yeah, um, I would love to play versus G2. I had the chance to play versus them in scrims last year and those scrims were not very uh, learnable. Like we didn't really have anything to learn from because we were getting stomped so hard that, um, mm -hmm. you know, the games weren't really productive. 
I'd love to face them and see, you know, if we can make make the match more the match more interesting. And also, um, I was really excited to be able to kind of compare our team to the other teams. So it's a bit sad that it's going to be delayed just because NA is mm -hmm. pretty weak as a region right now. And I wanted to see, you know, how we compare to the rest of the world or the, the best teams in the world. Um, definitely looking at G2. Um, Gen G is looking pretty solid. Um, e Stars is for some reason really good. I I'd love to see how we, we do versus them as well. Yeah. I think those are the teams that I'm looking at mostly. I have a feeling that you've been asked this question quite a few times because it's been a recent topic, but do you think Cloud9's dominance and the lack of challenge within the region would help or hurt Cloud9 when it comes to facing international teams? Um, definitely hurt. I don't mm -hmm. think dominating this hard is as helpful as, you know, G2, they play Fnatic a lot and they talk about how Fnatic is always challenging them, how their matches are, you know, are pretty hard. Um, obviously, we had a loss, so I can't say that we're dominating, you know, really hard. I guess we are, but we still had a loss. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, I think uh, being challenged harder would be good for us just, you know, as a wake-up call, as, uh, you know, showing our weakness or mm. um, maybe seeing different play styles, adapt to that. So, um, while dominating is good for our confidence, I, I think that overall it would be better if we were taking a bit more losses. Okay. Um, thank you so much for the interview and thank you for a great game that I certainly enjoyed watching. <laughs> I hope the fans enjoyed watching it too. Um, any resolutions or anything else you want to add heading into the playoffs? Um, well, thank you for the interview and also uh, for the Cloudline fans, I know you guys have been waiting for a long time for finally seeing Cloudline lift a trophy and I think, well, this year's the year we do it, so um yeah hi okay hi okay thank you and i really appreciate yeah, it and you. best of luck in the uh best of luck in the thank playoffs you. thank you thank you thank you Bye. Bye.